the door won't close. Sometimes in life, things just go wrong. But it's how you deal with these problems that makes the difference. I don't know what we're going to do. I genuinely don't know. Back in 2020, we set off an attempt to drive our 18-year-old van Trudy all the way around the world. UK to UK. 20 countries in 20 months, starting in 2020. But over the past three years, life has thrown us some real challenges. I mean, for starters, there was that COVID thing, which resulted in us spending 95 days locked down in a car park in Old Town, Istanbul. We've driven thousands of miles along crazy roads. Okay, maybe looking back, we probably shouldn't have. And we've lost count of the number of garages that we've had to visit. But taking all that into consideration, the following couple of weeks has proven to be more stressful than all of these. It isn't the mountain ahead that wears you out. It's the grain of sand in your shoe. Robert W. Service. Good morning. Today is a sad day. Today we are leaving Mexico. We've had so much fun. In fact, if you look at the weather, it's crying that we're leaving. Trudy is looking amazing with her shiny wheels and her shiny front and Chris touched up the paint and everything. In fact, even the front of Trudy is absolutely immaculate. We had it detailed whilst we were here. She's ready for the shipping and she is looking pristine, people. In fact, we got all the jobs done. We stuck the knob on, we cut off the waffle boards. Oh yes, it's still on, the knob. Yeah, we've had the rust out with. <laughs> We've had... The, 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 the gear stick knob did fall off in the last episode. We've just done so many jobs that we needed to do. Our girl is loved. Right, you are in good. charge of putting oh, yeah. the Mexico sticker onto Trudy. No, no stress or pressure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Garage Versailles. Prime position. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Can I just say, this guy is famous in the Overland community. He is the hero of the day and has got... You have! <laughs> he's got so many Overlanders out of trouble because of his knowledge yeah, and his just general sure. attitude of helpfulness. And if you do come to Tijuana and you need anything doing, we'll put his details in the yeah. comments below. So this is Ricardo's office door. He's got a little wall of fame. Look, there's Eva, next Meridian. These are the guys we met on the, the way down from Alaska. Yeah. Beautiful. Ricardo is amazing. We were just about to start the engine and he's like, you can't go. I need to just check your levels before you leave. So he's giving Trudy love. Yeah, she's like a niece now. Like a niece. <laughs> so we got one brake light up here, which isn't working. So uh, before we go, we're just going to do that. So it's a good job we checked. Why is it called a Phillips screwdriver? Maybe he was called Philip, and yeah. it was Philip's screwdriver. Well, there you go. He made a special one with a special screw. Thanks, Philip. It's very handy. Okay, check. Put your brake on. Yay, it's working. All good. Okay, so before we go, we have to let the back tires down because I don't know whether you saw the video, but Trudy doesn't fit under this uh, this door, so we're stuck unless we let the uh, the tires down. And even then, it was a bit of a tight fit. Marianne, start her up. It's so close. Slowly. Bit more. Bit more. Bit more. Hold on. Uh, yeah, go. Go. You got one centimeter clearance. On Oh, go. Jeez. That is crazy close. You're, you're, you're good, go on. I think we're out. That should be lower now, shouldn't it? Oh my goodness, that is so close. You have no idea. That's less than it. That's less than a centimetre. So now we just got to pump the tyres back up. <laughs> Marianne thinks I was being dramatic. She couldn't see how close that was. It was literally like half a centimetre. I saw Ricardo's face and he was like... <laughs> Thank you for everything, my friend. 
Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys. We will you see you in England oh, for, yeah. the, for the welcome home Bye. party. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. Our time in Tijuana is done. Let's go to the border. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh, it's been absolutely amazing. Bye, Ricardo. Thank you. So the uh, yeah, the main border is only probably I don't know half an hour's twenty minutes drive. It's just the other side of the city, and uh, if all goes well, we should be uh, back in the U.S. in an hour or so. Border crossings are always a bit stressful. You never know what's going to happen. Something always happens. It never goes as smoothly as we like, even though we feel we're pretty organized. I just say, Trudy is looking pretty immaculate. She really is. And they've done a really good job. The weather today is definitely sad to see us leaving Mexico. It's not happy today. One good thing while we were at Ricardo's, we had the rattle, the famous rattle that's been going on in Trudy for months, if not years. And uh, so far, there is no rattle. The mystery rattle. I think Ricardo finally solved it. Yeah, he spent a lot of time down there looking at, feeling things, poking things, bending things, replacing things. I think he's done it. I think he has. I'm not gonna miss the potholes in the road, that's for sure. But she's still not rattling. We're going down one of Tijuana's roller coasters. My goodness, look how steep that road is. <laughs> Ricardo was like, yeah, don't worry. You're a heavy vehicle, you won't slip. But we may not stop at the bottom. Well, you get a nice aerial view of Tijuana. <laughs> I don't understand why they, do, why they have stop signs at the bottom. They should just let you go. We've got the sign for San Diego, adios amigos, goodbye from Mexico, and uh, just around the corner is the US-Mexican border. You can tell we're coming to the border because it's, uh, it's a traffic jam and lots of little stands and stalls and guys selling stuff. Well, the, the heavens have definitely opened for us leaving. I wouldn't want to be selling stuff outside today. Oh, it's really... Windy. And we put the uh, we put the water repellent stuff on the windscreen yesterday, and it seems to be working really well. We can still see it when we've got the windscreen wipers on. Yes, that means we cleaned the windscreen. <laughs> so today is the start of our uh, getting ready to ship to Japan. So we're crossing the border today, <laughs> and uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to find a FedEx office because um, we need to FedEx the original documents for Trudy, the owner's documents, to the shipping company to give them to the Border Force people. And that's been a complicated process. We, uh, we said we couldn't give up the original documents until we crossed back into the US and then that got miscommunicated to Homeland Security, then Homeland Security wanted to call us. But today we are entering and the first job, we found a FedEx office, so we're gonna FedEx that because we only have two weeks until we're supposed to be on a ship and it's not even fully booked, paid for and arranged yet. So life is gonna be a little bit complicated in this video. I think this is one of the biggest border crossings we've ever been to, it's huge. And that's because this border crossing is actually the fourth busiest land border in the world. With its 34 northbound lanes, it carries 70,000 northbound vehicles and 20,000 pedestrians per day. And that's just northbound. We tend to always have problems when we cross borders. And we couldn't help but wonder how many truly looking vans they've seen, if any. But hopefully today's crossing goes smoothly. I wish I could lip read. I think he's saying, what the hell is that? <laughs> They've spotted us. Some crazy English people. Borders always make me nervous. I always get churny stomachs. Do you? Don't you? No, normally I don't, but this one I, I do a little bit. Although they don't look mean. Come 
morning. We're going to Alpine. Alpine. Um, yeah, yeah, we're going to Alpine. Uh, we're packing our vehicle up we're and cleaning it because we're shipping to Japan. We ship this to Japan. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then we're following by aeroplane. From Long Beach. From Long, Long Beach, Beach to uh, Yokohama. Would you like me to open so the door? Where are you guys going next? So we're going to Japan, then South Korea, uh, and then we think Malaysia. Yeah. So you're going to drive around Japan with this? Yeah. 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 We're well, trying to drive the, you see the route on the side of the yeah. van? And she's a right hand to, drive. That was the original, that was before Covid. Okay. And the, and the, the problems in Russia, but now, oh, yeah. You guys are, uh, you two? We are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Anything to declare today? No. Nope. No. Would you like me to open or are you okay? Hmm? Would you like Should me I to open the, the door? Uh, yeah, could I look Yeah, of back? course. Sure. Can you open the side door? Yeah. UK, England. We got the uh, we got the entry permit and the EPA documents. Okay. Here you go. This is the uh, that's the address for the vehicle. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. And that's where the steering wheel's on this side. <laughs> steering, steering wheels, wheels on, on the wrong side. side. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> The same yeah, as I'm Japan. I'm used to that. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be correct when you get to Japan. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. All right. Okay. All good. All right. So follow it round. Phew. That went better than I thought it was going to. We made it. Welcome back to the United States of America. Okay. So we've come to the uh, the FedEx UPS offices. Postal Annex here, just close to the border. Okay, there's never a dull day. This is a completely new problem. What the, is that? The door won't close. You'll have to bolt it from the inside until, and we'll have to meet Ricardo somewhere, somewhere. Should we just video message Ricardo? Yeah. It's a completely new problem. We can't close the door. The door's broken. That one there, it's just loose. And this one, that one feels normal-ish. But that one is... Yeah, I, I, I want to see the last one. Okay, well that wasn't part of the plan today that the uh, the door mechanism has gone this is when it all started going wrong inside i was worried i mean we only have 14 days until trudy has to be dropped off at the shipping port what if we need to order parts from europe but it's not just missing that month's ship to japan trudy's insurance and permission to be in the us is also running out Normally when we ship, we keep our personal belongings in the van. But not this time. It's not permitted from the US. So we need to pack, record and photograph every single item in the van and ship them separately with a different shipping company. That needs to be done before we drop off Trudy. And so that adds another time pressure. Okay, the day is just going. It's one o'clock. We, uh, we've parked up outside McDonald's. Marianne's gone in to buy lunch. We couldn't go in because the van won't lock. Um, because the, uh, the door mechanism has gone somehow, um, yeah, we can't lock the van. So that means we can't leave the van unattended. So I'm not really sure we might it might be easier just to go back to Ricardo's because it's literally 20 minutes from the other side of the border and we're still at the border. We'll have lunch and think about it. Okay, we've had lunch. We've decided we're not going to go back to Mexico straight away. We're going to go to Marianne's long distant cousin's house who we've arranged to stay with tonight. And then we will open up the door and assess it tomorrow morning. So first stop, we're going to U-Haul to buy boxes because we've got to pack the van up. Do we know how many we need? No idea. <laughs> Hi 
Okay, Google lied. That is not U-Haul, that is a stacks up storage. So, he only has massive boxes that you use as a wardrobe for people to store in the storage. So room. where is U-Haul? It's not here. It's 15 minutes away in El Cajon, U-Haul El Cajon, and they have all the boxes. Okay. Google has not been updated because this is definitely not U-Haul. It's right. a storage center. So we have to go 15 minutes back in the direction we just come from. It's not a very big U-Haul. Specializing in motorhomes. Next U-Haul. I somehow have a feeling that this isn't going to sell moving boxes looking at the size of the building. It's not easy. They're all called the same thing on Google. Okay, no boxes, but the owner here is super, super helpful. There's apparently another one just down the road. So round three. And he phoned to check they had boxes. There you go. So we're on a winner. Check. Something worked out today so Check. far. <laughs> okay, so that's all good. What is up with this weather? It's actually snowy hail. I thought California was supposed to be hot. Okay, so we've now had a, a, an email from the shipping agent saying that we have to drop the vehicle off next week. Eight days. Eight days. So if we've got a problem with the door, we're not going to make the, the ship. Good morning. Today is another day. And uh, we've woken up here in the Californian suburbs uh, in Alpine. Blue skies. After the snow, the rain and the cold that we had yesterday, it's lovely to see the blue skies. We're actually staying at uh, Marianne's long distance cousin's house. So this is, for those of you that know Aunt Julia, this is Aunt Julia's brother's son. There you go, that's a bit confusing. So we're staying uh, with them whilst we're getting truly ready for shipping to Japan. And check out the size of these two rocks. They are absolutely massive uh, leading up to the entrance of the house here, which is absolutely amazing. Is that not the biggest rockery rock you have ever seen in your life? I love it. The guys have been absolutely amazing. Hospitality, we had a nice dinner. They invited us into the house. They've given us a bathroom and towels and all the usual lovely, lovely welcome uh, that we've been receiving here. But I just want to share this view. How amazing is that view? But today is not a relaxing day. We, uh, we had an email yesterday from the shipping company. When we shipped before, they've asked us to drop Trudy off at the port 48 hours before, but not this time. The shipping company now says they want it six working days before the shipping day, and that has given us a lot less time to get Trudy ready than we had planned. If we're gonna make the boat, um in the next shipping this month we have to drop the van off next friday and we have to catalog and list and price and photograph every single item in the van we also have to fix the door but we're lucky uh david's son Andy is a very handy Andy mechanic guy so he's going to look at this when he finishes work today and fingers crossed uh, he will be able to fix it uh, if not one of his friends will be able to so we're going to give that a go. We also had sent to David's house our uh, carnet de passage which is the document we have been waiting for. You have to have this to go to some countries. It's like your vehicle passport and it covers which countries? Tokyo, uh, Japan, South Korea, and Malaysia. There you go. That is the plan for the next six to eight months. Um, so yeah, the shipping stuff's all in flow. We've sent the stuff to the shipping agent yesterday with the FedEx. We've got the Carnet de Passage. So now we need to fill up the boxes we bought yesterday and try and catalog everything in the van. I have a feeling that's gonna take a couple of days. Mm. So we've just had a notification that the vehicle owner's documents that we've sent to Texas to the shipping company have arrived. So I've just emailed them to say, do you think they will have time to send them back to the customs in California to approve the vehicle for drop off 
for next Friday. So it's going to be touch and go, people. But in the meantime, I think we better just crack on and pack up the van in case it's an all go. Prior planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance, so we should just crack on. So I think we're going to start emptying the cupboards at the front and work our way all the way down into the back. We've got the boxes laid out there ready to go. We also have to remove all every single decorated bit, bunting, lights, chickens, rugs, little things on the wall. It's all got to go in and be catalogued. Last night was freezing cold in the van. <laughs> but aren't you grateful that we had our blankie from the beach? Oh yeah, the blankie from the beach kept us warm. It was so snugly warm. We got the diesel heater. In fact, we need to run the diesel down to a quarter of the ta uh, tank before we ship, which it isn't. So we might be driving up and down the highway this week as well. Um, but because we've been parked in Ricardo's garage for like four or five days, we didn't get any so solar charge. So the, the van is pretty well flat. So we couldn't actually put the diesel heater on this morning because the battery was like warning it was getting too low. Okay, it's lunchtime and we've only done one box. It's taken that long to take everything, pack it, photograph it, and put it into a spreadsheet. This might take us a while, my sweetness. I think it might take us a little longer than we anticipated. Okay, it's three o'clock. We're on box number three, but <laughs> we are having a little bit of a panic about this shipping next week because they said they can't guarantee we're going to make it and the paperwork that we sent off yesterday will arrive and return back to Texas to, to be able to send to us in time to ship. Now, if we miss that, it means we have to wait another month for the shipping date, but our insurance runs out the following week, uh, so in a week and a half's time, and our permission to have Trudy in runs out in a week, uh, a week and a half's time after the shipping date. So that means we'll have to we'll try and leave Trudy in the port uh, to ship. Now we have got an option that we could ship from Vancouver as well. The problem is now we don't have the paperwork because we've had to send that to Texas to send to the customs people. So it is really up in the air. And I have to be honest, it's pretty stressful people. So Marianne is just on the phone to check. Um, she's trying to get hold of the shipping agent just to check that it is okay for us to leave the van at the port. The thing is, we've had all of this organised and put in place. We were just waiting to do the final paperwork. So I'm feeling frustrated because we've been doing this for months, talking about it for months. And then they're just like, we need the van by next week. <sighs> Have, and we need the paperwork, the original. We yeah, we haven't been given the heads up for any of this and it's just... It's very disorganised. Yeah. It's crazy disorganised. The joy of shipping. So we won't be using that shipping company again. No, they don't answer the phone. Three different answer machines I've been put through to. We should definitely screenshot their promise to the customer of looking after you and helping you and making it stressful. We should, we should, we should highlight we should that, that to them. We should do that. <laughs> Communication has been <laughs> non-existent. Okay, so after a long day's okay. packing, we have Andy, who is actually Marianne's, must be like second nephew. Yes, he's as surprised Aunt as I Julia's am. brother's son's son. Look at that. <laughs> would have thought, Who would have yeah. thought we related? Andy has English family and he's as surprised as I am to find out I have American family. He's going to attempt to, uh, to look at our door. He's got a very impressive toolbox, so I'm impressed already. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guess what? My girlfriend got that for me. Really? Yeah. You just have the best girlfriend. She's his, awesome. His girlfriend, Jordan, is so lovely. We did meet her last night. She is very cool. So we're going to have some electrical going on here. So if I need to hold something, just let me know. That's from the, uh, yeah. Okay. So if you ever want to know what a Fiat Ducato door looks like, that's it. <laughs> and we have no idea other than this wire is a bit loose. <laughs> so after taking the door apart, looking at the mechanism, we figured out that the actual locking device is faulty and we need a new one. 
The only problem is we need to order it from Europe. It takes about five days to get stuff from Europe. Tomorrow is Friday. If we don't get it in time, we miss the ship. If we miss the ship, then we're gonna end up overstaying with the van. So we're gonna have to, I think, stay up tonight until like midnight, one, two o'clock in the morning to speak to our, our contact in Slovakia to try and find the parts, order the parts and pay for the parts tomorrow. Otherwise, I don't know what we're gonna do. Maybe we'll have to ship from Canada. Maybe we'll have to ship from Mexico. Maybe, I don't know. I don't, I genuinely don't know. Yeah, I don't know now. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna process that and we'll come back to you later. But anyway, thanks for taking the door yeah, off, Andy. Andy thank you, so much <laughs> thank you for at least helping us figure out what it is. I did the best I could. No, and you did a good job. You've diagnosed the problem, which means we can now do something about it. Exactly. Right? Because if you hadn't diagnosed it, we would still be scratching our bottoms yes. tomorrow. So <laughs> exactly. Thank you. So, so thank you up very much. No problem. Yeah. No problem at all. Okay. So let me give you an update. <clears throat> We, uh, we ended up staying up till uh, two, two o'clock in the morning to call the, uh, the company in Slovakia that we normally get our parts from. I just wanna say, not sponsored, but how amazing they are. Um, they've arranged to send all of the door parts to completely rebuild all the locks and the central locking system in Trudy. Um, but it's not gonna get here till probably Wednesday, all the parts and we have to drop the ship off. Uh, the shipping company said today that it's Thursday. So, and we'll probably have to drive back to Tijuana to Ricardo's to get it fixed. So I think the reality is starting to hit that we are gonna miss the ship to Japan. Um, and we're just trying to figure out what that means and what we're gonna do. Um, but we should be able to store Trudy at the port for the next ship, which will be in five, five weeks later. So uh, yeah, we'll keep you updated. We're gonna be making some phone calls and stuff and uh, we'll clock in with you, clock in with you later and, and let you know how it's going. But <sighs> not the best time really. Things do go wrong at the worst possible times. We woke up to an email from the company in Slovakia saying that the car lock was out of stock and they wouldn't be able to get one until Monday. This is the most stressed we have been on this trip. If we can't get Trudy fixed before she has to be out of the USA, we will have no choice but to head to either Canada or south to Mexico and beyond. Join us next week to see what happens.